All right, welcome everybody. I am Masta, and we are here for the 2022 Ulala Idol Adventure Beginner Guide Tips and Tricks, things that I've learned throughout the time playing Ulala. This is more geared towards beginner players who don't know what they're getting themselves into, and for people that have taken a long, extensive break and are going to come back into the game. We do have all the characters on the screen as you can see we have two different healers up top we do have four different dps's and down below we had the two different tanks we're going to go ahead and talk about attribution points right out the gate so for healers and for dps's we want three up top zero in the middle and two at the bottom just to get as much damage output as we can tanks on the other hand are a little different warriors you want more armor because they are more armor based so you want zero two and three Gladiators are a little different. They are more HP based. HP based. So you want 0, 3, and 2. However, gladiators, if you're having problems with being the boss, but you're not having problems with your tank dying or your healer not being able to heal the tank sufficiently enough, gladiators can go a 1, 3, 1 to give you that little bit of DPS that you may need to keep pushing past the bosses. Now we do have some lingo down here to talk about. We have QB, which is your quick battle, which is just praying. It's something that you'll have to do once a day if you're going to be on daily, hopefully. We do have CP, which is character power. Some other people may re refer to it as just power, strength. It just really depends. We have LFT, LFG. They're the same thing. One's team, one's group. It's still the same meaning. Somebody is looking for a group or a team to join and be a part of. Now we do have a couple of characters that have longer names that can be shortened down, such as Assassin to Sin, Warlock to Lock, and Gladiator to Glad. So let's go ahead and jump into the Adventure Guild, which is one of the things that you will need to be taking a part of as you're playing Ulala. So whenever you log into Ulala, you'll have this screen here. You'll want to go to the bottom left, down to the camp. And then up towards the top left, you will have your Adventure Guild. And these are just going to be daily little tasks that it asks you to complete in order to get a wishing coin. To then wish for getting a really powerful skill. Next, we're going to be talking about Mystic Realm here. Which that ties in with being a higher level than at the very beginning. You have to push through a couple different little areas. And you will unlock Mystic Realm. I'm not sure exactly the level you unlock it at. But I do know whenever you are at least level 25 and above. And you get your gear leveled up to 25. Which I will show you about gear in just a moment. Whenever you have your gear 25. Then you can start participating in Mystic Realm. Which will then help enhance your gear. So here we are. Let's go ahead and talk about gear. Like I said, we have gear down here. We have two different numbers. We have a 29. That's going to be your actual level. And 25, the actual level of the gear. And the actual level of the gear comes up in increments of 5. Now, whenever you do have better pieces of gear, you'll be able to click on change. And you can click on equip. If there's no indication of a red little circle with a white t-shirt, then you don't have to change anything. I should point out, whenever you hit, I believe it is level 28, you'll have this quick equip icon that you can click on, and that'll just automatically equip the best gear. And along with that, you can quick enhance, which will level up your gear as best as it can. All right, now that we talked about gear, let's go ahead and go over to skills. So initially, you'll have your first skill slot unlocked. The second one will be unlocked at level 10, the next one at level 20, and the last one at level 30. So whenever you are leveling these up, keep in mind you are leveling up the slot itself and not the actual skill. So if this one were to be level 8 and you were to move it down, this would be 7 and this one would be 8. I myself, whenever it comes to leveling up skills, like to keep them almost even, if not one maybe ahead of the other just by one level. Just so that way there's no big difference in either healing, damage, or, or tankiness. So that way one's not overdoing the other one. Let's also go ahead and talk about AFK hunting resources. Once you get past a little bit of Sinbad, you will be able to unlock the ability to click on the map and click on your running characters, which will give you a few options to choose from, which will be the item that you acquire while you're AFKing. 
And to start off with, I would always run skills. The higher your skills, the better off you'll be, especially whenever it comes to bosses that you may need to interrupt and you have interrupt skills. And if they're not high enough, you won't be able to successfully always interrupt the boss. So getting your skills leveled up faster will be really, really beneficial for that. Now, I will say if you're running out of money, you can go for shells. But that is entirely up to you. You'll also get shells, you know, by con continually leveling up, uh, pushing past bosses, and just letting it AFK itself. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about the boss. So up here at the top right, you'll have your map, and you'll also see the little icon of a boss's head. So you can go ahead and click on that, and each boss will have two different attributes. They will be different depending on each boss that you fight. You, you will run across the same boss multiple times within the same area, so that's okay. Don't worry about that. So in order to confront the boss and to fight it, you want to counter clockwise by one on each of their attributes. So instead of high earth, you would want your pet to have high lightning instead, so that way it combats the earth. And same for the lightning. It has low lightning. You'd want something with like low fire to come over and combat the low lightning. All right, now that we got done talking about the boss fights, let's go ahead and move on to your pets and your farms. So you're going to initially unlock your first pet or be able to unlock your first pet at level 16. Once you do, you can go down to your character icon, click into your bag, click into the others tab, and there should be an egg in here for you to hatch. Once you have it hatched, go on down to the little pet icon and go ahead and click release or dispatch. Mine's already dispatched because it has the paw on it. And with that being said, you can also go up to the Farms tab, and you can go ahead and place your pet. That way it'll help you become a little bit stronger. Now, don't worry about the rarity of your pet. I would just use whatever pet is best at your disposal. Now, I would not go over the top and swap this pet over. Because I'm DPS. And because I'm DPS, I'm not really too worried about armor. I would be more worried about getting more HP rather than armor and then more pet attack so that way the pet is a little more help for me. All right, and since we're still here on the pets, we can go ahead and click this expand over here and it'll also show us what our pet's main talent is. For DPSs and healers, you want to go for assist because that'll help you out the most. But if you do have a high attack and a high assist, you can also use that as well. As far as tanks go, if you're going to be a warrior, you want something with high guardian because it'll give you a better armor bonus. And then for gladiator, you want something with symbiosis because it'll give you a better HP bonus. All right, let's go ahead and talk about cooking and capturing. So our food and gathering our pets. So you can go ahead and click on your character icon, go into your bag. There is a food section. And the ones that have good full colors are one are, are ingredients that you can actually place down and capture pets with. But the rest are ingredients. And those you can combine to make the food that you see here. So let's go ahead and go over to that tab. It'll be the bottom right. Over to the market. And we have a capture section, which will allow you to capture the pets once you place a piece of food in there. The food should also tell you how long it takes until you are able to capture it. And then over here, we have the cooking section. And we can view the different recipes. The check marks means you have enough ingredients to make that specific food. The ones that are shown, but not with the check mark, means you're missing an ingredient. And of course, the grayed out ones means you haven't unlocked it yet. Now, also in this market tab, we do have the commercial street, which is the market itself. And you can purchase stuff in here for starfish. That is a currency that you will get ever so often in the game. Or you could also buy stuff with shells. If you don't have enough starfish, but you have pearls, you can instead use pearls, but pearls is actual money. Alrighty, thank you all for watching the entire video. If you guys have questions, feel free. Let me know in the comments if there's something I skipped over or didn't mention. Go ahead and drop that down as well. It'll help everybody else out and we can go ahead and discuss that as well. We will be planning to make future videos in depth on different subjects. 
uh, such as skills, hero bond, clatter card, hero soul, um, toy shop. But all those will take time. So bear with us. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, learned something from it, and hopefully you guys will come back for the rest of them.